Okay, here's another thing with the fundamentalist atheist thing. I had mentioned that the I had known and actually still talk with one person who was a fundamentalist evangelical proselytizing Protestant Christian, very militant about his beliefs, who just want one God less. There was no new information there. Um, and again, as if the Bible fell out of heaven complete, like the fact that there are people, and this astonishes me to find this out, that believe that when the, they use the term the Bible being inspired, they think it means that God told the authors what to write. Instead of like how normal people think of when they say the Bible is inspired, meaning like, you know, <coughs> God, his, God inspired the song Amazing Grace. The man was inspired by his faith in God to write Amazing Grace. Um, the beauty of nature inspired that artist to paint that picture. Inspired motivation. Motivated. Right? Not an equal word, but Kind of. Uh, but there are people who, when they say they believe the Bible's inspired, they believe that it's kind of like how the story of the Quran came about, that it was an angel whispering in the ear of a man, you know, basically dictating the words of God. Or something close to that. Um, instead of, you know, or that it's, the writings of Paul, who's probably manic depressant, and fallible. I mean, when I mentioned, I did a string of videos, my old channel, uh, about documentary hypothesis, pointing out the two different creation narratives, and that there's an anthropomorphic uh, deity called Yahweh, who seems to have a council of gods, and another one, Elohim, that... Even though the name is plural, he is always one, and he's immaterial, spatially not available, does not have a body, does not have flesh. Um, and they tell two different stories, and they're competing. Um, P, the writer of P-Text, was competing with E-J, and E was competing with J. Or J was competing with E. E was written first, then J wrote to counter E. Then E and J were stitched together. Then P, after reading E J, <coughs> wrote his own uh, version of how the events went down. And then the Deuteronomist. Was pro uh, was pro E J with Deuteronomy, and then there was a redactor. Some say it was Ezra, some say it was the Deuteronomist. I would say the redactor was probably probably Ezra or somebody around that time. But these are people who, when they become atheists, um, again the Bible. It's not a collection of ancient works for them. It's something magical. They throw it all out and say it's myth. Well, archaeology and the written histories of other peoples show us that it's not. Right? King David, sociopath, evil. And in the books of Samuel and Kings, there's a lot of propaganda that's pro-David and anti-Saul. Uh, just like that's pro-sons of Aaron, anti-sons of, 
of uh, Moses, you know, as, as Levitical priests. But the historical events, in that respect, the chronicler is very accurate, very, very accurate. <coughs> and these kings did exist. Um, and, you know, you show them things of archaeology and they, well, that doesn't, yeah, it, it it doesn't add up exactly, you know. Again, people who think that Christianity was based on the Bible and not, you know, the other way around, that, you know, these Christians through the centuries started collecting works of... Hold on. Started collecting works that were written in the first century and, you know, they didn't get to the compilation of the West until about 800 years later, that these were just individual works. You might have Mark, Shepherd of Hermas, Epistle of Barnabas, some of Paul's writings, but uh, the church operated for a half a millennium with no Bible to speak of. Um, but the fundamentalist atheist or <coughs> will just say it's all fairy tales um, ignore everything and then just mock it and not have respect for it I if, I can read it devotionally but also I look at it critically because that's what I'm trying to do a critical view of it that's why I agree with documentary hypothesis and it, it is a good record and when they, when these these certain types these certain breed of atheists hear that me say, well, it's a very accurate record of um, of the ancient world, and it's it gives us a good good reliable information. They go ape shit. They, I mean, it's like you just kick their grandmother in, in her pussy. <laughs> Since you're using profanities, I don't want to make you feel awkward. I'll use them. Um, but yeah, it's it's the like those. The fanatic, you know, who is not just, I don't believe in God, but anti, not only anti-Christianity, but anti-Christian and anti-Bible, anti-religious art. I mean, check it out. Oh wait, that door doesn't, most doors, since they were just... The design was done by, uh, I don't know if it was the Puritans or the Quakers. You'll see a cross, and on the bottom, it's an open book, an open Bible. You know, usually, it'll be like this. It'll have the cross, and then down here, you'll have a line going through it. And that's the, uh, that's the door. It's the type of person that would take all their their doors off like that and throw them in the garbage because of, you know, Christianity. Yet they, they don't know what it is. And the funny thing is, is most of them don't know that the Eastern Orthodox Church exists or the Oriental Orthodox or the Assyrian Church of the East. <coughs> or that um, we either have to say we don't believe in heaven, hell, or God or that they're all the same thing. That's, hopefully that clarifies it for you a little bit. Peace to you.